Last week, in episode 350, I showed you how to build a versioned API for this store application. And we can access that by simply calling API slash products in the URL, and we can interact through this app using JSON. Now currently, this API is completely public. Anyone can use this to edit and destroy the products. Now normally you'll want to restrict access to your API in some way, and there are a variety of ways to do this, and the proper technique depends on your application's requirements. In this episode, I will show you several solutions you can use to lock down an API so you can choose the one that will best fit your style of application. One of the simplest options is HTTP basic authentication. It's incredibly easy to do in Rails, and most API clients should have no problem supporting it. To add this, just go into the controller that's serving up the API, in this case, this products controller here, and add a call to HTTP basic authenticate with, passing in a name, I'll set it to admin, and a password, which I'll set to secret. Now you'll probably want to move these options into some kind of external configuration so they aren't stored in version control. And also if you end up needing to do this in multiple controllers, you can easily move it into a separate controller and subclass from that controller. So now let's try this out. I'll use the curl command to make a request to my application at API slash products path. And now I get access denied in response. And if we check out the HTTP headers, you can see the response is 401 unauthorized, which is the proper kind of handling to do with an API. But if I make another request, passing in the username and password, admin secret, then I get the full uh, JSON response like I expect. One thing to watch out for is that this password is sent in the clear, so make sure to use a secure connection or maybe a digest authentication. Now another way we could lock down this API is to provide the client with an access token. Let me show you how you could do this. First of all, we'll need some place to store this access token, and I like to generate a model called API key with an access token string column. Now there are many other columns that you might consider adding into here. For example, you could add a role column to determine what permissions this given key has, or reference a user through this, and that way a user can have many different API keys if they want to, and you can determine permissions through that, or maybe an expires at a date time column to determine when a given token expires and so on. But I'll just keep this model simple for now with a single access token string column. Then I'll migrate the database to create that table. Now going into this API key model, what we need to do is generate a random access token string each time a record is created. And I'm going to paste in the code for doing this. It's just a before create callback, which triggers this method here. And this calls secure random dot hex, which is provided in Ruby 1.9. And this generates a random hexadecimal string value. And then it will trigger this again if it already exists to ensure that it's unique. You might also want to add a unique constraint on the database column as well. Now you can see this in action in the console. If I call API key dot create, it's going to generate a new record with a random hexadecimal string value. Now, however you choose to generate this and display it to the client is up to you, but usually it's on some kind of profile page that the user can copy and paste into their API tool. So now what I need to do is restrict access to this API by requiring the token be passed in. And there are several ways we could do this. One is just as a URL parameter, such as access token equals that value, and then it would give me access to the page. So going into the products API controller, I will just do this through a before filter, call it uh, restrict access, and then make this a private method down here, called restrict access, like that. And then here I need to fetch the API key based off of the token. So API key dot find by token, actually access token, and then that's params access token. And then I want to respond with the unauthorized status unless we actually found an API key. So this head method will just uh, render uh, nothing and just set the status to 401 unauthorized. Let's try this out. Reloading the page here with the proper access token seems to work, but if I leave the access token off or set it to something that's invalid, I get a blank page. But you can see through curl here that is actually returning a 401 unauthorized response. Now passing the access token through the URL like this probably isn't the best solution, especially if the token doesn't expire. People tend to copy and paste URLs and you don't want them accidentally sharing their credentials. So instead, we can pass this access token through an HTTP header. Well, Rails actually gives us some controller methods to easily add this functionality. You can see in a before filter, we could just call authenticate or request with HTTP token, pass it a block, and if the block returns true, it will give them access. So let's try this out. 
So in our controller, instead of checking the access token through the URL parameters, I'll just comment this out and paste in a new restrict access method which uses this authenticator request with HTTP token method and just checks if that API key exists with that given access token. So now when a request is made to the API, it's going to deny access again with unauthorized response unless a header option is passed in here for authorization and that should be set to token and set the token equal to that given token value. And then we will get a successful response. So you might want to mix and match these different token authentication methods to best fit the needs of your application, either through the URL parameter or the HTTP header. Now so far, the different solutions we've covered are pretty simple, but what if your situation is a little more complicated? For example, what if a user is able to log into your application and you would like other applications that use uh, your API to be able to simulate logging in as that user and access their credentials, but only if that user gives that application permission. This is a common scenario in social networking applications such as Facebook or Twitter, and a great solution is OAuth. Now I won't be covering OAuth in detail in this episode, but you can check out the site for more information. Basically allows you to secure an API and protect the user's data without uh, requiring them to spread their passwords around to other sites. Now I recommend you use OAuth 2, but it's still in draft form, so the documentation is a little rough. Thankfully, there are many projects available to help make it easier to implement OAuth in a Rails application. Doorkeeper is one of my favorites. It's still in early development, but is worth checking out, and I'll be covering this in further detail in this week's pro episode. Now I also recommend you check out the OAuth 2 gem. Many other projects build upon this gem, so it's a good idea to get a better understanding of how it works. Also, I'll be linking to several other OAuth projects in the show notes for this episode. Before I go, I want to mention one more thing, and that is with any of the solutions I've shown so far, it's very important that the API interaction happens over a secure connection. So be sure you're using SSL. Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you found it useful. In the pro episode this week, I will create an OAuth 2 provider using Doorkeeper. I will then show how to set up OmniAuth as an OAuth client and use the OAuth2 gem to securely communicate with the API. To watch that episode and all other pro and revised episodes, just head on over to railscast.com pro and then sign up there for just $9 per month.